Um, I don't enjoy Chloe's company really. You know, she's, she's not fun like the other girls are. So. I've got the boring group, definitely. And made the decision not to waste his Traveller of the Week money on people he doesn't like. My extra 50% I'm going to try and retain and keep for when I'm with Mary Claire and Chantel. I think I'd benefit from that more than buying Chloe a nicer hotel because she'll still be up herself and she still won't vote for anyone she doesn't want to vote for. It's only minutes after the meeting and the beginning of week three. I think the group that we've got is just like the bangingest group. And Nathan, Chantel and Marie Claire, travelling separately from the others this week, have decided to spend the night in Central Solo before heading for the next destination in the morning. Yeah, I'm happy with the group. I've got girls. I've got, I've got the best of the bunch. You've got, <laughs> you got to be the guy with two girls. You've got here. <laughs> they may not know it yet, but this week both groups are facing their toughest challenge so far. Destination 3, Bali, a beautiful party island almost 400 miles east of where they are now. The route is complicated, potentially expensive. There are no direct trains and in places the roads are treacherous. Getting to Bali on time will not be easy, especially on a tight daily budget of just £12 each. As if that won't be hard enough, to pass their travel challenge this week, they must complete this difficult journey without the use of guidebooks or maps. And en route, both groups must find and scale Mount Bromo, a massive active volcano in East Java. If they are unable to reach their destination on time or fail any part of their travel challenge, they will be fined 25% of their individual travel budgets for the following week. For our backpackers, this week is about making the right travel decisions. Each group must outdo the other by being more organised because, when they meet in Bali, they must impress each other with their abilities as competent travellers. Oh, my days! Afterwards, based on what they've heard, they must individually vote for who they think has stood out as the best traveller of the week, rewarding that person with 50% more money on their budget. It's 7 p.m. in Solo. I walk onto this main road out here. And Nathan wants to take Chantel and the girl he fancies, Marie Claire, to a hostel he stayed in last night when he was travelling with the boys. Walk through this way, girls. Through here. <laughs> I think this is the right. All he has to do now is remember where it is. But because of this week's travel challenge, he hasn't got a guidebook or map to help him. Oh, this looks different. <laughs> I think, oh, where is this way? Nathan has got us lost already. <laughs> With the girls beginning to lose patience, Nathan is determined to prove that they can rely on him. Uh, girls, it's this way. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, it's oh, sweet. It looks sweet. Lovely. See, I'd like an apology, girls, please. <laughs> to his relief and the girls, Nathan eventually finds the hostel. I like this. I think it's all right. How much? You do for no, 200. 200. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Team man. Peckle. You right? 200,000 rupiah for the three of them is just under four pounds each, roughly a third of their daily individual travel budget. Hello. You speak English? Yeah. Good. Okay, right. We have a task to get to Mount Bom Bomo. Bromo. Bromo. Yeah. With their hostel sorted, Nathan and the girls want to organise their trip to Mount Bromo, an active volcano that they must visit en route to Bali, their final destination for the week. First, if you go by train, you get to Surabaya first. Can they want to start their travel adventure as soon as possible and plan to leave in the morning. How long, roughly, does it take to get there? Yeah, about nine hours. Nine oh, hours? Yeah. Nine hours on the train? By mini, mini bus. How long by train? Because they are not allowed to use guidebooks or maps this week, both groups must rely on locals for information. It's a lot of changing. Yeah. That's like changing three times. And it's better by a minibus direct from Solo. So it's easier just to get a straight minibus than yeah, the whole way? Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. you very much for your yeah, help. We'll speak to you later. Thank, thank you. you. After being told that the train route to Mount Bromo is both complicated and expensive, Nathan and the girls opt for a tourist minibus service leaving Solo at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Nice. We've done so well, like, we just worked together there yeah. and got all that done. I think it's really good that we've like organised it and we know that we're waking up at a certain time and we know that we've got something to do in the morning. Um, we're so organised now, so it's really, really good that we're pulling together as a group properly. After the break... Anyone's 
speak English. Nathan and the girls are taken for a ride. Okay, we don't understand, so there's no point in all of you speaking. And Chloe and the boys live life on the edge. We're going over a cliff, all about to die. Welcome to Hustlers University. The first time in your adult life you're in the right place at the right time. We have 18 professors who are going to teach you every single modern wealth creation method that I have used to become a multimillionaire. When I have meetings with my friends at the villa in Dubai, it looks something like this. And every single person who's inside of that building is a member of Hustlers University. Listen, we're going to tell you how money's made. Our six inexperienced backpackers are traveling in two separate groups. But their objective is the same, to reach the party island of Bali via Mount Bromo by the end of the week. Bali is the third of eight destinations our competing travellers must reach on their two-month journey across Indonesia, from Jakarta in Java, ending on Mount Kelimutu in Flores. And it will be here on Mount Kelimutu that they must decide individually which one of them has best adapted to the backpacking experience while immersing themselves in the local culture and therefore deserves to be called the ultimate traveller and walk away with £10,000 prize money. It's 9am. And despite waking up feeling extremely unwell after picking up a tummy bug, Nathan has got himself out of bed and on the tourist minibus he booked with the girls last night. Uh, this is the I can just imagine us in the beach in Bali. They're on their way to Mount Bromo, an active volcano nine hours east that they must see as part of their travel challenge en route to Bali. Trying to get to Mount Bromo. Um, you know how we get there? Take a train, just go to train station. It's now midday, and while Nathan and the girls are already three hours into their long drive east, Andrew, Chloe, and Lewis, who spent a quiet night last night in their hotel, are still in solo and are only just starting to organise their trip to the volcano. We're hoping to get to Mount Bromo by train. What's the easiest way of getting there? Solo Surabaya and Surabaya Bromo. At the train station, Andrew discovers, as the other group did last night, that to take a train to Mount Bromo is not only complicated, but also expensive, especially as the economy seats are sold out. Right, so we can get a train from here to Surabaya and then from Surabaya to Propolingo. We can all, that can all be done by train, but we have to get executive class and it's going to cost us more money. That's fine, I don't mind getting executive class. Unlike Andrew, who has his additional Traveller of the Week money, Chloe can't afford to blow her budget on expensive transport. And Andrew wants her to know that if she runs out of cash this week, he won't bail her out. So if we do get the executive class, by the time we get the proper lingo, we spent a whole day's budget on just travel. We haven't had any accommodation or any food. And obviously the accommodation is going to have to be cheap if we spend this much on travel. Yeah. And obviously you'd be in a situation where you'd prefer to have nice accommodation and compromise on the food, yeah. whereas I'd prefer to have a dive yeah. and just eat because, you know, Yeah, it's more but then you me. can eat because you've got your travel of the week money. True. I'm not I'm not saying, like, I don't, I don't have an opinion on how you should spend it, but I don't know. Chloe's quite happy to not eat to have brilliant accommodation, whereas I'd rather do it the other way around because if I'm in my sleeping bag and I'm asleep, I don't care what the decoration on the bathroom curtain's like. You know, it's difficult because me and her have completely opposite trade-offs and she wants the executive class and, and you know, and a nice hotel, etc. And she expects me to front that with my tra Travel of the Week money, but I'm not going to. I'm just glad we're on the way. We'll be in Mount Bravo before we go to bed. With the train not an option and a nine-hour journey ahead of them, the group have no other choice but to hire a private taxi to take them straight to Mount Bromo. That took a while, guys. At 800,000 rupiah, about 45 pounds, the cab costs more than the group's combined basic daily budget. If we would have got the trains, it would have been a very long night and it would have been still quite expensive and we, ended up, we would have been two hours away from the mountain anyway. Who knows what it would have cost us to get what we needed to go after that. Yeah. Andrew, who has his Traveller of the Week money, and Lewis, who managed to save some cash from the previous week, can afford it. But Chloe, who only has her standard £12 a day, will have to be very careful with her money from now on. This is going to be a long, hard slog. Yeah, 
After 10 hours on the road, Nathan and the girls, who have so far made better and more affordable travel decisions than the other group, arrive at the base of Mount Bromo and check into a hostel. Could you do it for 200, please? Because we have very little money. OK, I'll give you a uh, special price, it's 200 for you. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. After negotiating a price of just under £4 each for the night, Nathan, who is still feeling unwell, heads off for a lie down. Yeah, right, thank you. See you later, guys. See you later. Yeah. Aware that they must climb Mount Bromo with or without Nathan, Mary Claire and Chantel start making the necessary arrangements for a sunrise tour of the volcano. Uh, you can start at four from here, this is nice. Yeah, this is good. You'll be able to wake us up in the morning? Yes, I will wake up you. Nathan, who has barely spoken to the girls today because of how he's feeling, is frustrated he hasn't had the chance to get to know Mary Claire better, who he admitted to liking last week. I don't think this week's um, enhanced my chances of uh, to getting to know Mary Claire more because even though she's been she's been real nice to me and stuff, I ain't had a lot to say to be honest. I've just been feeling sick, so I ain't I ain't been able to talk to people as much. I ain't been able to make jokes and that. So this ain't enhanced my chances of travel of the week or anything else to be honest. Can you sit back? Sorry, because I'm just feeling a bit... It's now 2am and Andrew, Lewis and Chloe, whose taxi has been slowed down by a thick fog, have been on the road for 11 hours. It's just so foggy you can't see five foot in front of us. Well, we're going over a cliff all about to die. Oh, I don't like this. It's actually scary. I don't like it. I'm coming from you, that says a lot. I thought Gabby meant, like, you know, beaches and stuff. After a terrifying two hours in the thick volcanic fog, it's 4am by the time they eventually reach the town at the base of the mountain and they want to go straight to bed. Reception's Are people <laughs> sleeping in reception? <laughs> That's it's funny. funny. It's not funny. It's become funny. It's roughly four o'clock. We set off from solo at three p.m. and it's a.m. now. That's a long time. Um, Chloe is fuming, not happy, but I think that's going to be a common theme. Hi, you take us to our room. Yes, yes. Is there is there a toilet, a proper toilet? Yes. And hot water. Hot water, yeah. Okay, great. While a weary Chloe and the boys climb into bed at five a.m. Do you think there's going to be like a bubbling lava? Across town, Mary Claire and Chantel, minus Nathan, who's still poorly, have had a night's sleep and are up early to complete the first part of their travel challenge, climbing Mount Bromo. We have a run! <gasps> wow! At almost two miles high, the active volcano offers stunning views, particularly at sunrise. Oh my god, it don't even look real. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. Wow, we're higher than the clouds. I don't know if that's like water or clouds or air or sky. It's just unlike anything. I'm really pleased we came. Worth waking up for. As the girls take in the breathtaking sunrise, they reflect on how happy they are to be travelling together. I feel like I've known you for ages. I know. I think because we're like both happy in each other's company, <laughs> <laughs> we're able to just like sit here peacefully and enjoy it. Mm. Yeah, these are the type of things that I thought I was going to get to see. Mm. Experiences like this. I didn't expect it, like anything as amazing as this. After completing the task of seeing Mount Bromo, Mary Claire and Chantel return to base. Hello. Hello. We need, hello. <laughs> we need to get um, the ferry from Balawangi. Yes. Without wasting any time, they head for the nearest travel agent and inquire about getting to Bali, the final destination for both groups this week. How much does it cost? For the ferry? Yeah. 
for the very east coast, one people, 3,700. With Nathan unwell, it's left to the girls to arrange travel plans to Bali for the following day. Do you know about the bus? There is a bus direction to Denpasar. To the ferry port? No, to Denpasar. Maybe the minibus goes on the ferry? Yeah, the bus is coming up on the ferry. So you come and pick us up from here, take us to... Harbour and then ferry including. Sold what they believe are combined bus and ferry tickets direct to Bali, the girls congratulate themselves on their efforts. I feel really, really organised and I'm proud of us. Um, I'm glad that we've got a little planned strategy together um, to try and get ourselves and Nathan to Bali. We faced the problem and we conquered it. We did. <laughs> Is that, is that all that smoke? Is that what it is? Is that the crater? Oh yeah, look. Oh, yeah. After their long journey last night, Chloe Lewis and Andrew are refreshed after a lie-in and are on their way to see Mount Bromo. Yeah. The top of the mountain is going to be one of these taller peaks. Having missed the volcano at sunrise, the group must settle for a yeah. sunset visit. Yeah, it is fantastic. It's better than I thought it would be. But unlike Marie Claire and Chantel, they've opted for a tour that takes them much closer to the volcano's crater, which, while more spectacular, comes at a heftier price. How's it going, Chloe? Guys, how are you? Struggling. You look quite relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My, my, my. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is nuts. That is crazy. It is amazing. It's pretty impressive. Is there lava in there? Mm. Swishing around? It was really hard to get here, but I'm glad we are now. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool to see this. It's definitely good for the soul to do to come and see something like this every once in a while. Despite having had a difficult and expensive week so far, Chloe and the boys soak up the sunset, happy that they've completed the first part of their travel challenge. It wasn't very easy getting here, but it, definitely, it was definitely all worth it. Um, and yeah, I think we really enjoyed it, and it's, it's up there with the cobra eating, and it's the best experience so far. Let's go. Here I am, I'm back again. Nathan's back in time. It's 8am the following morning at Bromo and Nathan is feeling better at last. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Thanks. And just in time, because yesterday Chantelle and Marie Claire booked an all-inclusive nine-hour bus and ferry ride to the party island of Bali, the final destination of the week. Bali, 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 we are so excited. With one hour to go, the group are making good progress towards the ferry port. Until the bus unexpectedly comes to a halt. And they are asked to disembark, as if this is the final stop. After buying what they thought was an all-inclusive coach and ferry trip to Bali, the girls try to communicate with some local taxi drivers to see if they can shed any light on the matter. Why do we just off the bus? OK, does anyone speak English? Do you speak English? I reckon these cases of... They've ripped us off. Do you speak English? We organised... What's this? Yeah, so. Sure. No, we organised to stay on coach to get on a ferry. That coach over there, we were told that that would take us all the way to Bali. Oh, it is, we it is, have. It is, it is. Okay. We were given this. We've paid the ticket. We paid 125 each. Why are we taking money? 
<laughs> it soon becomes clear that the tickets Marie Claire and Chantel purchased yesterday won't get them any further, and they're still hours away from Bali. With the group left with no other option but to pay for a second bus to take them to the port, just get in it, just get in it. Chantel hopes that they won't have to rebuy the ferry tickets to Bali as well. I refuse to pay for the ferry. I'm not paying for the ferry. As soon as they arrive, Marie Claire makes a beeline for the port officials to check the validity of their ferry tickets. The guy said that um, this includes the ferry. Ferry includes. I don't know what's what's the company. What's the agent name of the agent? Uh, I'm not sure. Hang on and quickly discovers that, like their bus tickets, they're worthless. Is there anything you can do for us? Because we have, like, very little money, because we've paid, we paid 125 from Probolingo. I mean, we are very nice people. We, <laughs> we just want to get to Bali. With no other option, the group are going to have to fork out for yet more ferry tickets, and Nathan is not impressed. And next time we're going to buy something, let me do it, innit? No, but we've tried, they try and take the mic, though, We like, did try. And the geezers. They think because you're girls, they can take the mick out of you. Yeah, so. prob that's probably the case, but it, doesn't, it shouldn't dishearten me or Mary from trying to get No, it. I know it's not your fault, but let me do it next time, innit? Last night we was like well excited, me and Mary, because we had worked a good price and everything. And now it's like a letdown, and Nathan probably thinks that we're really like gullible because he, he weren't part of the negotiation process. So it's just like a bit of a slap in the face for me and Mary for trying so hard and it not actually working. Coming up. I like you because you've got a really nice personality of things. Nathan goes for broke with Marie Claire. I don't know what to say because I'm just cringing. And Chloe snaps. Backpacking like a peasant. What if I earned more money than you? Never mind. No, no, impossible. Really? Is it impossible? Literally impossible. Numbers don't go that high. It's late morning in Indonesia. And two days before both groups must gather in Bali and tell each other about their respective adventures. Afterwards, based on the stories heard, they must individually vote for Traveller of the Week. 6,000 Gilimanov, yeah? While Nathan and the girls who left Mount Bromo first thing this morning are waiting for a ferry to take them to Bali. Where do we buy bus tickets? Bus tickets. Chloe and the boys are still in Bromo at the bus station. Ticket. Here we go. This must be it. And make inquiries at the ominously named Risky Transport about how much it will cost to get to Bali. 90,000. Yeah. How can we can get this <laughs> Can we make exception 80,000? OK. Because Andrew has his Traveller of the Week money, the equivalent of £30 extra on top of his basic budget... Where will the bus the be? Here. And Lewis has cash left over from last week, neither of them are feeling the pinch yet. How much you have left when you get to Bali? Chloe, however, is running out of cash fast and, with no other access to money apart from her designated budget, she can only rely on the £13.50 she has left. So basically, this is what's the last me a day and a bit. It's not much I think, accommodation and food and whatever and travel. Her coach and ferry ticket to Bali cost just over £5, leaving her £8.50 for two nights accommodation and all of her food and drink. As I'm travelling with travel over the week, <laughs> I'll be sleeping outside and not eating the, until the meeting. Yay! No. Chloe's wanting a piece of Andrew's cash, def definitely. You can see it in her eyes. Every time, every time he buys something, she's like, oh, I'm thirsty as well, huh? Ooh. But yeah, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I can't see him sharing that much, to be honest. My situation's quite dire this week. Um, I am trying with Traveller of the Week, but Traveller of the Week is quite controlled with his money, and I'm sure he will help us out at some point. While Chloe is hopeful that Andrew will come good in the end, she has no idea that he is purposefully saving his extra money so that he can spend it on people he likes. 
Chloe's really broken, she keeps dropping hints, but it doesn't matter how many hints she drops, I'm not gonna spend money on this, I want to. I'm not for spending it on the other group, these two are boring, I'm not enjoying this time, so I'm not gonna front them in a nice hotel. I'd rather do it with Nathan and Mary Claire and Chantel and have some fun, so. It's gonna be a hard life for them. They better get used to plain rice. It's a pretty manky bus. It's cheap. Yeah, come on. Let's look, oh, the, yeah. let's look on the bright side. If we make it. Oh. Oh wow, well, this is what it's like to be poor. With Chloe fretting about her money situation, it's midday when the group set off. And Risky Transport lives up to its name. Oh my god. Living on a budget. It's like dangerous. It's just dangerous. It's quite good. We'll either all die or be in Bali early. It's evening. Speak English. And after travelling all day, Nathan and the girls finally arrive in Bali and want to know where young backpackers stay on the island. Beach, tourists, backpacking. Not, not understand. But with no map or guidebook this week, their only source of information are the port officials. Party. What's it? Yeah. Party. Not party. No, oh, it's not no, my no, birthday. No, listen, 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 listen. Okay. Listen. okay. okay. Are there lots of... Um, Party places, discos, things. It takes them almost an hour, but the girls discover that Kuta is Bali's party capital and head there for a celebratory drink. Uh, we have arrived. We are in Bali. Woo! While Nathan and the girls get settled into their new lively environment. Oh. Andrew, Chloe and Lewis are still travelling through Java. Excuse me, how long to Bali? It's now 10pm and after encountering heavy traffic, their coach trip to the ferry port has turned into their second tortuous journey this week, taking far longer than expected. To a pub? To Bali? No way. No way. That's scary. I think it's going to be either two hours or we're going to get to Bali at two o'clock. Either way, we've been on this bus a long time and I can't see any sea. I can't see a beach. Not good. Battered, bruised and exhausted, it's midnight when Chloe and the boys eventually board the ferry to Bali. Starving. After a week of bad decisions, long journeys and unforeseen expenses, group morale is at an all-time low. I can't really see a pleasurable side to this at the moment. I really, really can't. But it's been, like, tough. It's just been, like, one thing after the other. Travel, 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 getting to places late at night, not really... not, not feeling settled at all, moving every single night. It's just been a bit... a bit much, really. just kind of had enough. Oh, my sleeping bag is soaked. Just when Chloe thought things couldn't get any worse, Andrew breaks the news that their bag somehow got wet on the coach. I went in to get my glasses and yours is on top of Lewis's. Like soaking. Yeah. If my sleeping bag's wet, if everything's wet, I'm going to go completely mental. Backpacking like a peasant. Also feeling the strain is Andrew, who on top of everything else this week isn't enjoying the company of his travel companions. Lewis and Chloe, I think, are the least fun people in the competition. If you're with Nathan or Chantel or Mary Claire, they'll be like, okay, we have no money, we're broke, but, you know, they'll make a joke, they'll be up for a laugh, they'll, they'll do something to try and enlighten the spirits, and these two are just, Chloe's happy to complain, Lewis is happy to listen. If he was a colour, he'd be beige. It's just, just boring, it's terribly boring. I just want to get this over with, I want to get this leg of the trip over with, I want to change my group. And start again. It's morning in Kuta and the day before the end of week meeting. And Nathan, Marie Claire, and Chantal, who arrived in Bali last night, have made a beeline for the beach.
After taking a dip in the ocean, the girls start to eye up the local talent. There's a few hot guys that are almost girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> He's got nice hair. He has nice body shape. It's like a square. <laughs> it's like a Lego man. <laughs> when Marie Claire spots a guy she likes, Chantal takes the opportunity to talk to Nathan, who made it clear at last week's meeting that he wanted to be in a group with Marie Claire. So is he fancier? You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you haven't really like tried. I think that I don't think she likes me, so, so I might as well her. just give up. If you think that, then you should just go with what you feel. But um, no, I don't know. She might do. She might. I doubt it though. I think the way you're going about it is probably the best way because if anything's going to happen, it's just going to happen. While Chantel now knows for certain that Nathan has a crush on her friend, her instincts tell her that Marie Claire does not feel the same way. I don't know what to do because I feel to tell Nathan to just like give up. But then I don't want to like ruin his chances because if he carries on trying, then he might get somewhere. I think she might like me a little bit. She'd give me little signs and stuff like, which is a good sign, but I just think I'm not very good at knowing signs if a girl likes me or not. So unless it's concrete evidence, I just don't really know to be honest. So uh, I'm not really confident about the situation. ecstatic to be in Bali Yeah, now. it was such a nightmare. Across town, Chloe, Andrew and Lewis, who only arrived in Kuta at 1am this morning after a long and exhausting journey, have slept in. But guys, by the way, I've got something to tell you. But just when they should be able to relax and enjoy themselves, Chloe breaks the news that her money situation is worse than she thought. Uh, I thought I had 50,000, but actually I did do some laundry last night and um, I've got about 20,000 left. <laughs> You just beg you, what are you gonna do? Beg you guys or find some kind of a job in Bali. I'm sure you can find work if you try hard enough. With only 20,000 rupiah, about £1.20, to last her until tomorrow, Chloe knows that she will struggle to feed herself unless one of the boys helps her out. How much have you got left again, Andrew? Mr. Traveller of the Week. He's got loads. You have Stitch. got loads, which is tingy. Only for name calling, you're not getting money out of me that way, are you? <laughs> I just think it would be nice, like, if you offered just to, you know, buy me lunch. Chloe is unaware that Andrew is hoarding his extra money for next week when he hopes to be travelling with people he gets on with better. What are you looking for? Oh, okay, my money. I'm trying to think where I had it. Wanting Chloe to stop asking him for money, Andrew, who also handed in some laundry when he arrived at the hostel last night, decides to pretend that he left a large amount of cash in a pair of jeans. I'm actually broke. I've got 100 grand from my bag. I had about 200 grand in my jeans, but in my infinite tiredness last night, I handed them in for laundry. And then they send the laundry to another company. If an external company have it and they find money in there, they're not going to leave it in there, are they? Tonight. So I can wait for the jeans to come back and pray, or I can try and track it down and turn up and they say, no money anyway, because I can't prove it was there. That's terrible. So I've got 100 grand. Well, completely broke. But 200 grand got lost. Still got more than you. That's such a shame. Such a shame. Oh my gosh! Wow! With Andrew successfully pulling the wool over Chloe's eyes, the group head for the beach. Ooh, it's quite chilly. Chloe annoyed me this morning, being expected and asking for things. I didn't want to totally alienate her and Lewis from ever voting for me ever again by saying no, I'm keeping it and making a big deal of it, so it was all a scheme to make them leave me alone. And yeah, I'm still rich and they're still poor. We're going to go out tonight and they're going to think I'm poor, but it's, I don't drink, so they'll be worried that they can't afford beer and I'll be sitting there with my water happy. And next week I'll still be loaded. A mile down the beach, Nathan, who has a crush on Marie Claire, hasn't found the right moment to tell her how he feels. But he's aware that the groups will change at tomorrow's meeting, so with Chantelle catching some rays, it's now or never. Uh, I wanted to tell you that I really like you and stuff and I like you because you're not like the girls I normally see and stuff like that because you've got a really nice personality and things and you're a really pretty girl and things like that so... Just like, I'm just cringing inside just now but I do, I think you're so, so sweet, you're so nice, really nice guy. 
and I, lo I love your personality and like I love spending time with you and stuff but you know that I don't have like relationships at home I've never had a serious boyfriend and I'll just I'll, when I've got set in my mind I'll say it so yeah yeah that's what I'll I know I didn't mean to embarrass you, so, but I know you are really embarrassed. I'm embarrassed as well, like, but I hope Thank you don't you. mind. No, that's really lovely. It's really nice. I just like, I don't know what to say because I'm just cringing. Well, give me a hug. Thank you anyway, that was nice. Right, thank you. Okay. Yay. It is nice um, when somebody tells you they like you, but I'm not looking for a relationship, especially not an, an experience like this. I don't want to feel like tied down to one particular person. And as much as I do get on really well with Nathan and I love spending time with them, I really want to get out and meet as many people as I can. Well, I just spoke to Mary today about how I felt. I don't know if I said the right thing, if I embarrassed her a bit too much, but I think no matter what I would have said, I would have embarrassed her. So I feel a bit guilty, but I just had to say it, really. I don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen to me, so I don't, I don't know what to expect. I'm just looking forward to it. It's good to see the guys again. It's the end of week three in Indonesia, and both groups have successfully completed the most gruelling leg of their journey so far. Challenge is what I was craving when I was coming on this, and we've done it, and I feel great about it. And are now on their way to the Tanalot Temple on the outskirts of Kuta, Bali, for their third official end of week meeting, where they must decide as individuals who has been the best traveller this week. I've had some setbacks, um, been ripped off along the way, but um, bounced back always. While the accolade has no bearing on the final outcome of the competition, the winner will receive 50% extra on their budget for the coming week. Nathan, Chantel and Marie Claire are the first to arrive at the location. I can't wait to find out what they've been doing. Because we've done well, but I don't know if they... I, I got the feeling that they've done better just because like they're so. the older group and stuff, so... But it isn't long before Andrew, Chloe and Lewis join them. Hi! Easy. Hi, hi. hi How are you? You are? Hi. Yes, nudgems, nudgems, man. We've got to do that. You look really brown. As the outgoing traveller of the week, um, I'll be chairing this meeting. So it's probably best if we get started. It's now time for each group to try and convince the other that they were the most organised and coped best with the gruelling journey from Java. The six are aware, however, that ultimately only one person can be named Traveller of the Week and that this is their last opportunity to win votes. How was your week without us? I was ill in bed, like, proper ill last week. Although I was sick, I did try to do as much as I could and I didn't didn't try to dampen the spirits of things. You don't have time to do any activities or stop and see any sights on the way? Oh, we went to the mountain. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Wow. We had like a, an overlook of like the volcano, like all the volcanoes. We had like the whole scenery. We had a couple of setbacks as well. We actually got ripped off like halfway through our journey. That coach over there, we were told that that would take us all the way to Bali. They think because you're girls, they can take the mick out of you. But it was quite good that the way we dealt with it and stuff. I just got stuck into things that I start to organise everything. I think I've also taken charge of like organising things, um, kept the group together. I just think that I've stepped up to the challenge and yeah, so I think I should be traveling the week because of that. So what, everyone have a good week at you three? We yeah. did, yeah. We went on horses at Mount Bromo. It's definitely good for the soul to do to come and see something like this every once in a while. Sunset's amazing. Yeah. So did you get to go and see the lava? We went up to the top of it, yeah. Yes. You don't go to the, the crater? No. no. He didn't go to the crater. We just watched the sunrise and then we had to go back. Oh. Did you spend all your budget? He lost it. He oh. lost his Traveller of the Week money. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yesterday, Andrew lied to Chloe, telling her that he'd lost his Traveller of the Week money so he could save it for another week. I had about 200 grand in my jeans, but in my infinite tiredness last night, I handed them in for laundry. 200 grand got lost. Got That's such a shame. When I got my laundry done, I left it in my jeans. So when did you guys actually arrive in Bali? Saturday night. 
And what time is it? About nine o'clock. I think you guys were about five hours ahead of us then. Okay. In a better group, like you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Both groups have now told the story of their week, giving each person the opportunity to make a case for why they should be named Traveller of the Week. But who will it be? Coming up. Oh my god. Oh my god. The six like the sound of next week's travel challenge. Oh yes. And Andrew tells it like it is. I don't like Lewis, I don't like Chloe. And that's a 66% hate rate. Every single second you're not in Hustlers University, there are things happening, conversations happening that you're not watching. Information, that could be the one little piece of information you need to break out. It could be that one little sentence that changes everything. You're in Hustlers University and you're going to make money. The six backpackers have been gathered at Tanalot Temple on the outskirts of Kuta, Bali, for just over an hour. Each of them has the opportunity to convince the others that, as well as being in the most adventurous group, they, more than anyone else, deserve to be named Traveller of the Week. Now, it's decision time. Having heard from everyone, and bearing in mind that we can't vote for ourselves, it's time we decide who is Traveller of the Week. Want to vote first, Mary Claire? I'm going to vote for Chantelle. Um, I feel like she did take on the motherly role and kept the two of us happy when we were down, so I really think she deserves it for that. I'm going to vote for Nathan to be Traveller of the Week. Even though he was ill, he tried to like keep his spirit as high as possible and not drag down the group. This week I'm going to vote for Chantelle. She really done well. I didn't think she was so good at haggling and stuff like that. This week I'm going to vote for Chloe. She's had two lads with her and she just got stuck in and got it all done. I'm going to vote for Nathan this week. And obviously you were quite ill, you couldn't travel, you couldn't do stuff. That must have been really bad, but you like got through it anyway. Thank you. So far, Chloe has one vote, while Nathan and Chantel are tied on two votes each. Andrew is the last to vote. can't give the Traveller of the Week to the person who fell ill as hard as you did try. So I'm going to vote for Chantelle. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Woo! Because Chantelle has been named Traveller of the Week, she will have an additional 500,000 rupiah on her budget for the coming week, giving her almost 30 pounds more money to spend than her fellow travellers. I'm so pleased to have the extra money, and like, I'm glad Andrew picked me over Nathan, because I think I've deserved it more than Nathan. With both groups having passed this week's challenge, it's now time for Andrew to announce their next destination and new travel challenge. I can now reveal this coming week we must all travel to the neighbouring island of Gili Trawangan. Each group must try to make as many new friends here oh, in Bali yes. as yes. possible. Yes. We have to get our friends to meet us on the island before our next meeting, and whichever team has the most friends wins the challenge. Oh, That's cool, yes, right? You know what I'm like. Great. Yeah, I'm cool with that. The group with the least friends will automatically fail the challenge and each person will have 25% deducted from their budget the following week. Before setting off, the six must decide on the new groups for the coming week. Anyone have any ideas of who they want to travel with? Personally, I think I'd really like to get to know Lewis because obviously I don't know you, so... I want to be an Andrew's group. With Andrew agreeing to be in a group with Chantel and Marie Claire requesting to be with Lewis, each pair must decide between Chloe and Nathan as their third travel companion for the coming week. I have missed Nathan's company, so if, if Nathan's up for being in the group with us, that'd be the group I'd be most happy with. I personally would have liked to have travelled with Nathan again, but I'm happy to go um, in, yeah. Everyone should uh, lucky dip to who gets me, you know. <laughs> I'm joking. Chloe, which group would you prefer? It'd be quite nice to be with a girl again, you but know, like either. either one of you would do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. What do you think? I'm happy with anything. Okay, so Chantel, Nathan, and me. So I can confirm myself, Chantel, and Nathan. And group two is Chloe, Lewis, and Mary Claire. And that concludes this week's meeting. See you next week. Oh. Bye, people. See you later. Have a good one. Bye, good I think the girls maybe don't, you know, they never seem to want to be in my group. 
Um, and so I think for them I'm just pretty much part, part of the scenery, which is a bit sad. Come on, crew. With the meeting concluded, both groups go their separate ways, knowing that they won't see each other until the end of the week. I'm a wee bit disappointed in the group because I, I really wanted to travel with Lewis, but it would have been nice to have um, Nathan in the group just because he's um, a bit more fun. When I've been with Chloe before, I had Chantel to kind of like keep me going, so a wee bit disappointed at that. I'm the group I'm in, and obviously I like Nathan's company. Chantel I haven't travelled with yet, so that'll be good. But I think winning this challenge is down to me and me alone. I've already got some ideas, so um, I'm going to make I'm more concentrating on beating the other team. Not for the money, just because I don't like Lewis, I don't like Chloe. And that's a 66% hate rate. This diamond watch, and I'm about to put this video in so you know I'm not lying. When I picked up this diamond watch, the guy who sells diamond watches said to me, man, I have so many of your students coming to me buying diamond watches. And my students were from Hustle's University. So yeah, I just want to say thank you as well for all the referrals because it's so nice to see that they're getting so many like well, friends of yours firstly, yeah. and also young guys from the university and yeah. you know from your friends and whatever yeah. um, coming and buying diamond watches. I mean, twenty-year-old buying diamond watches is just crazy, right? See, the young guys in Hustlers University, we got we got <laughs> we got the young guns buying diamonds. It's crazy, honestly. This year we probably had about it's at least twenty. Like, mo 20 guys, at least most of them have been like early to mid 20s. Yeah. And some guys in their 30s, but like jewelry, diamond yeah, watches, just wanting something custom, statement piece. Obviously, great for exposure as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just nice to see because this year has just been like, well, I said this year, last year has been crazy the amount of young money and people yeah. doing stuff and being smart about how they make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you do, right? That's right. So we, we teach people how to make money and uh, some of them listen, so obviously. And the ones that listen, yeah. I see when they come to Dubai. Yeah. They yeah. come here and they turn up in a Lamborghini and they come and buy a diamond watch. It's like it's like the starter's kit when you come to Dubai on holiday. Yeah, that's right, diamond watch and Lambo. It's got to be done. I, I kind of I kind of purport that idea as well. Then. I kind of push it. Like, you know, get a Lambo, get diamond watches. But that's what money's for, it's spending. So, and you've got to enjoy it. Become Hustlers University. Welcome to the metaverse. Inject it into your brain. And if you only exist amongst the money, you're going to end up with some money. Welcome to Hustlers University. <laughs>